Hey y'all, welcome. Welcome back to Artistic License. My Thursday soon we do a little bit of whatever I want. And today we're gonna be doing a playthrough of Riven. But first, oh my gosh, welcome you guys. I'm back. I know it's gonna be a good Thursday stream because I see Koneko in here. Got the first. Welcome in Koneko. Welcome, Bree. I cannot believe you actually got here so early. And oh my gosh, look at that new little bit badge. That new little bit badge looks so cute next to your name. And yes, we have a new setup. Okay, we moved. My office is set up, so this is this is the new background. You can see, okay, you can see pin collections. Oh, it's very hard to point backwards. Yeah, pin, uh, sorry, pin collection is back there on the curtain. Nail polish right there. You, I've got the ears actually hanging up now. And so far the cats have not discovered that the ears are there. Remember, they like to eat them. Jane, welcome! Yes, yes. Oh my gosh, Koneko, we're gonna have to get you a sub badge again because that's another thing. We have got all new beautiful badges. I had an artist actually um, make them look like Lady and Re, who is what they were always supposed to represent, but of course, um, I don't got no skills. So it was just like a little noun project image silhouette looking thing that I had recolored. But now I got an artist to do it. And look, there's Lady in the background laying in the kitty cat spot. So no bed in here anymore because I'm not sharing it with a spare room. So I put uh, the love seat in here and there's, there's Lady. There's Lady just chilling, chilling in the kitty cat spot. Yep. <laughs> yes. Hi, brain. Oh my gosh, you guys. I am so happy to be back streaming. I'm so happy to be back streaming. She's so zen. She's so zen. You normally, okay. So like all day when I'm working, Oreo is laying there, right? So I think this is like the first time she's really gotten to lay there. So normally Oreo is laying there. And so then because she was getting jealous and they were arguing about it, I put this bed over here. Yeah, over here for her. And then she can lay there while I work. But Oreo is busy, I guess. So he's there. Oh, that's another thing about this house. Our patio, our outside patio actually has a screen so we can leave the door open. So I'm pretty sure Oreo is, is he's probably out on the patio at this point because I know the boys are sitting out there on the patio. So that's probably where he is enjoying the outdoors. Oh my gosh, what's my, what's my hair doing? What's it doing? So many things. It is, we have a catio. We have a catio outside. So, um, so they are enjoying that. Ash actually really loves the catio. Um, Oreo likes it too, but he took a while to uh to get his confidence back the move really shaked him up i was surprised at how shaken he was kitty welcome welcome oh look kitty has one of the new sub badges it actually looks like ladies pattern now and there she is just sleeping just sleeping um is there a kitty showing yeah there is kitty showing off the cat badge that's right that's right so new sub badges actually modeled after lady New bit badges actually modeled after Rhea. I had an artist do that here. I'll bring it up for you guys so you can see it. We're going to go to my Twitch about. Let me make sure it's muted. Yes, it's muted. So you won't get double hearing of me. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys. Yeah, here we go. So you can see I have... This down here, you can see all the, the emotes. Um, there's a one new emote. We got new rainbow emote. And so I rearranged these a little bit. And then the badges. Here is what the badges look like. You can see their recolors of this one right here, Lady as a Dragon. And then the bit badges are recolors here of Re as a little unicorn. So you can cheer for these. So this is a badge you can get very cheap and easy. And you can sub for these guys. I love the kitty badges too. I'm so happy with them. They look so cute. Yes, yes, yes. They look so cute. Oh gosh, you guys, moving is finally done. Um, we're still on doing a lot of unpacking, but my office is all unpacked. So all of this stuff is in here. <laughs> oh, thank you, kitty. I do feel like I have a glow. As you guys know, it has taken since January. So eight months to uh to finally get moved almost the almost the amount of a, a pregnancy. It was like 30 something weeks. It was like an early term pregnancy amount of time. <laughs> ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. But we're finally moved. Um, you know, we're still unpacking a lot of stuff, but uh, but yeah. Whew, new house life. Sold the other house. So very, very happy about all of that. And I'm so glad you guys are here. It's like all of my friends are here hanging out with me again. 
<laughs> yes, we're going to be doing mist. We're going to be doing mist today. We're going to be doing mist today. I've got another fun thing to show you guys, but I don't have a good way of showing you. You're going to have to tell a friend to come in here that's not following yet to follow me or somebody who's not subscribed needs to subscribe or do a, or do a gift sub or something like that. So I've got other fun thing to show you, but someone has to do one of those things or you could cheer. Cheering um, would do it too. So someone needs to do something to make an alert pop up. That's what I'm trying to say. Someone needs to do something to make an alert pop up. <laughs> All right, you guys. So we love to start the stream with, oh, oh, look at that. I got an artist. I got an artist to do uh, new alerts for us too. And they're all of Queen and they're all different and cute. So that's what the sub one looks like. And thank you so much, Kitty, for the gift sub. I really, really appreciate it. Yes, they're so, so cute. Yes. And uh, so I hope you, if you're in here today, I hope you enjoy that gift sub from Kitty. But I've got new ones. I've got new ones for each of the alerts. So there's one for um, following, subbing, tipping, rating, hosting, and cheering. Yeah. Yeah. That's the six. That's the six of them. And they're all of Queen. So we've got like all kinds of fun stuff. Okay. As you guys know, we like to start the Thursday stream with a little personality quiz. So today we are doing Get ready for school and I'll tell you if you'd be popular or not. I want, it's, you know, it's back to school season. School started um, close to now in the district that's closest to me. So everybody's talking about, um, you know, back to school and, and buses and things. Did you know there's an app now? There's an app for our school district to tell you where the bus is. My mind is blown. I don't know. Like, that doesn't make sense to me. Um, yep. <laughs> <laughs> they already don't have my water bottle. I'm upset. Oh no. Okay. Well, we have to start this quiz then. We have to start this quiz. Here we go. Oh, it's the first question. You just woke up and you need to get hydrated. Which water bottle do you use? Oh, uh, we weren't allowed to carry water bottles when I was in school. Not until college was I allowed to carry something like this, but I would definitely use this one if I'm going to use a bougie water bottle. But this, I mean, tumbler, honestly, most of the time, this is what I've got, but that's, you know, they don't have like a beautiful color for that. So we'll use the crystal. Time to eat breakfast. Pick something to eat. Ooh, oh, look at that. Avocado toast with eggies. This is looks like a oatmeal bowl, some waffles, or some pancakes. Um, probably this is my breakfast. I'm pick the eggs, but I was mad at them being overdone. What, really? I do my eggs over hard, so this looks pretty good to me. Um, this looks pretty good. Like they're not too fried hard, but they're not going to run everywhere. I also would like this, but these are desserts. Although I, I absolutely love them. I'm not eating them for breakfast before school. Let's do your makeup. Choose a lip gloss. Ooh, we got to choose a lippy. Okay. Mm, let's go with the juicy bomb. I think that's probably high school me closest to high school me. Obviously a zoomer made this not a millennial. So <laughs> You know, that's very obvious. Okay, time to pick an outfit. What will you wear today? Oh, let's see. What am I wearing to school? Probably this. Or this, maybe. I could rock this. I, I couldn't rock this. Where the heck is my bra going to go? Um, But I could rock this one or this one. I think we're going to go with this one, though, because it's got some pink in it. Oh, I remember this game. Do I have any Pokeballs? I don't have any Pokeballs. There we go. Okay. Um, now you have to pick your backpack. Which one do you pick? Is there a messenger bag? Oh yeah, millennial definitely didn't make this, you guys. Um, there's no messenger bag. No messenger bag. What the heck? I guess if we're going with like modern day me, I'm picking this guy. But high school me, I had a messenger bag. You know what I mean? I'm not popular, which adds up. I'm not popular. This is 100% canon. Oh my God. <laughs> Jane would be popular in this fake school. Well, Jane, you, you, cause you know what the kids are doing a little bit. So maybe that's, you knew what to choose. Um, what snack do you take with you? Chupa choop. There is a chupa choop soda. What in the heck? Cheetos. Oh, I love Cheetos. I don't know what this is. Some kind of Japanese cookie. <gasps> Bubble tea. Bubble tea. Okay. We bubble tea wasn't a thing when I was a kid, but it's a thing now. We're going bubble tea snack. 
pick an extra. Oh, we've got markers, to-do list, a lunchbox, or a pencil bag. Definitely got to have my markers. These look fancy. Um, I had gel pens as a kid. I had all the rainbow color of gel pens. Those things were awesome. The kids are dumb. I choose with my heart. <laughs> Bubble tea and Sonic slushies are life. Agree, kitty. You should put on some lip gloss. Put on some lip gloss, Jane. Okay, before you go to school, don't forget your AirPods. Oh my God, AirPods. Actually, my AirPod case looks kind of like this. I don't have actual AirPods. I have a off a different brand that's better than AirPods, like softer and more comfy. But I do have pink ones. Like, I'll show you. They're right here. See? <laughs> So I have to go with those. All right, next. You just came back from school. What's the first thing you do? Makeup. Skin. Oh, I guess it's skincare. Oh, why are you makeuping after school? Sleep. Homework, I guess, or notes. Oh, it said, there's text underneath. I just can't read. Skincare, take a nap, your homework, relax, and watch Netflix. I would do my, okay, I would do my homework on the bus. No lie. And I'd be done with it. And I'd watch Netflix. Um, I got lemon lime with nerds every time I'll ruin your tongue, but it's worth it. <laughs> yeah, that one sounds good, Kitty. Um, I love things to ruin my tongue, though. Like, I love the uh, salt and vinegar chips. The more vinegary, the better, so that your tongue is destroyed by the time you're done eating them. Did you enjoy this quiz? I just want to know my results. Yes, no, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it was cute. I thought the answers were cute. Mm. You look very right I couldn't understand. So we have Alexa in this new house. And I know y'all could hear it, but I could not understand what he said. Let's see if Alexa tells me. Oh, he says, hi, you guys. He says, stream and friends. I say hi. Hey, Alexa, tell Levi everyone says hi back. Did I announce this? Yes. Announcing. Y'all tell me what else you want to say to Levi. Everyone says hi back. How good can y'all hear that? <laughs> My son called me Alexa instead of mom today to make a request. Oh no, kitty. Oh no. What? And said, oops, mom. <laughs> oh, that's too much. Okay. Anyway, let's see our results. Still waiting on that sandwich. Hey, Alexa, tell Levi... Brie is still waiting on her sandwich. You do know that one. Hey, Alexa, tell Levi Brie is still waiting on her sandwich. Did I announce this? Yes. Announcing. For Levi, Brie is still waiting on her sandwich. <gasps> I got no, I'm not popular. Well, I guess we can be not popular together, you guys. It looks like 63% is not popular, 36% is popular. So we're not popular together. <clears throat> we are we are like enjoying Alexa way too much, Brie. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. We absolutely love it. Okay. <clears throat> We're forming a not popular club. Yes, we are forming a not popular club. It's time to get the game going. But I just want to wait and make sure Levi doesn't say anything else and ruin the opening cutscenes. I think he is talking to Alexa. I think I can hear him. You can also just say Alexa announced Bree is still and she'll skip the confirmation. I tried that and it didn't work, so I don't know. I don't know. Losers Club 2022 edition, yes. Well, Jane, maybe you can be our liaison to the popular kids. So whenever we need the popular kids, you can help us out. For Karen. It didn't come all the way through. Oh, apparently you're supposed to get over it, Brie. <laughs> I guess you have to come down here. I know it's long for you up in Canada, but I guess you have to come down here for it. Okay. You guys, it's time to start the game. It's time to start the game. Let's go, game time. We're playing Riven. Um, this game is very old. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit more about it in a second, but first, we're gonna watch some cutscenes. So let's start a new game.
The opening cyan cinematic is like so much more intense in this game compared to Mist. It's like kind of silly in Mist, and it's like all oh, in this game. <laughs> Did you hear that, Bree? He said he's just kidding. Oh. Hey, Atris, what's up? Thank God you've returned. I need your help. There's a great deal of history that you should know. Most of what you'll need to know is in there. Keep it well hidden. For all reasons you'll discover, I can't send you to Riven with a way out. But I can give you this. It appears to be a linking book. a chance if this all goes well that I might be able to get you back to the place that you came from already in jail. I hear some feet shuffling. Hello, sir. Help me. I need out. That is not English. I do not speak it. And I've lost the book already. Good job, self. Okay. And he's being drug away. <sighs> well, you wouldn't be totally wrong about that, Koneko. We don't know it's off screen. Cannot see it. Oh, who is that? Uh oh. Oh, he let us out. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.
Okay, so that is the opening cinematic for Riven. Um, things to remember about this compared to Mist, or things to remember from Mist, is that Atris, the guy we were talking to at the beginning, he is one of the last surviving members of the Denis race. And uh, they are people from another world. They have the ability to write books, and those books become worlds themselves that you can travel to. Uh, remember last time in Mist, he had issues with his sons, deciding that this was a great way to become colonizers. And they turned evil, and we had to trap them, right, in the red and blue books, you remember. Well, now we have um, brand new issues. Catherine is missing. She is trapped on Riven. Um, we suspect Gen of causing that issue. Gen is uh, Atris's father, also big colonizer energy like his sons. You're seeing a pattern here. And we have this book down here, which contains a bunch of Atris's writings. So before we get too into it, we are going to read some of these writings. So here we go. All right. They held for more than 30 years, but the corrections I have made to Riven have finally failed. The island has resumed the familiar pattern of decay that is the hallmark of my father's work. I must now race to implement this new patch before it's too late. I hope that they revise, that my revised theories are sound. So he is trying to repair Riven because his father is really, really bad at writing um, these books. Hey, Moisty, welcome in, welcome in. Oh my gosh. <sighs> Thank you. Thank you so much, friend. I really, really appreciate it. We're playing Riven. We're playing Riven. We're opening up with reading Atrus's writing that he has left us with. Um, so next passage, revisions to Riven completed. There are still a number of minor adjustments which need to be made, but the basic corrections have been entered and should be working. Something's not right. I've been monitoring the instruments for several hours now, but have thus far deter observed no change. It's possible that I've made an error, though I've checked my entry against my pre-notation and can find no discrepancy. I've not had a rest in nearly three days, so it may be that I'm just not seeing it. If the fault is with my foundational assumptions, however, dot, 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 perhaps after a short rest, I will see something. So Atris is going through and trying to fix Riven because there are people living here. As you just saw, we saw two of them. There's people living here. Atris is concerned about the natives in this world. Um, and, uh, and so he's kind of competing with his father, trying to, to write it so that the people can live there peacefully. Success. It appears that my repairs have been effective after all. The gateway image has become noticeably clearer, and although it is impossible to know this with absolute certainty, the island seems to, be, seems to have quieted itself. Just a few more weeks of work, and I should be free at last to go there myself and attempt to bring Catherine back. The past eight months have left me little time to think to devise a strategy for getting her out of there. I've received no sign from her at, in all that time. I'm afraid that no, I must assume that she is all right, lest my fears undermine my efforts to bring her back. So Catherine is his wife that is trapped in Riven. <clears throat> Sorry, Levi's texting me more about the sandwich. Don't worry, Bree, someday you will be getting your sandwich. <laughs> um, I did not create the Age of Riven, unlike my father. I have never presumed to have such power, and yet the future of all those who live there has fallen into my hands. So what Atris is saying here is he's not convinced that when they write the books that they're actually creating worlds. He thinks that they might be tapping into existing worlds and manipulating them or something like that. He does not believe that the Denis have actually um, unlocked the ability to create. So far, I've managed to read the page before it turns. The island continues to appear stable, and I would like to believe that I have saved a dying world. But the theories of one individual cannot support the lives of real people indefinitely. I must get everyone off of Rivet as soon as possible. The problem is now Gen. I'll never be able to rescue Catherine and relocate the islanders if he is still the man he once was. I haven't seen him in over 30 years, but his history forces me to assume that he's still a threat. His myopic mission to restore the Denis civilization has left too many innocent creatures or cultures dying in his wake, and would continue to do so were he to once again be free of the confines of Riven or the Fifth Age, as he coldly titles it. He likes to number things. Gen likes to number things instead of giving them names. The universe has been safe from his corruptive influence for the last 33 years because no one has been able to leave that age, the last linking book out of Riven having been lost to the Starfisher upon my return to Mist. You guys remember the Starfisher? We originally fell through it. That's how we got to Mist. 
That was my intention, to maroon my father on ribbon by removing all the existing links to other worlds. And since the art of constructing books has long been lost to the fall of Denis, he would be trapped there for the remainder of his lifetime and effectively segregated from the countless other worlds that he would have invaded. So what he's saying is because Gen has lost his connection to Denis, he only has his memories to figure out how to write these ages. He doesn't have like a library of resources or anything that he might have used to have. In effect, that is what we achieved. But the way it fell, however, was no one's ideal. Through the string of incidents, he has gradually faded from memory. The deep pain of that responsibility for what actually came to be has never left me. That was an awkward sentence, Atris. Um, at the time, it all seemed so clear. Gen's destructive path could not be allowed to continue, but it was never my choice that the innocent inhabitants of Riven, who have already suffered so much, would be the ones to pay for it. Enough. To dwell in the past is to die in the present. The situation is not the same as it was then. The knowledge I've acquired in the years since that time has yet to be applied to this problem. I think I have the solution. Why did it not occur to me sooner? I do not know. Unless the idea of it had been pushed out with the thought of my sons. So he's talking about the events of Mist. A, the, a prison book. Many years ago during the hunting expedition through the ruins of Denis, I chanced upon a formula for the most unusual type of book. Unfortunately, due to the fact that my father was then in the habit of confiscating my discoveries, I was forced to leave it behind. Years later, however, as a part of my efforts to protect the vulnerable world's link to the books in my library, I was pleased to find that I could still recall... I don't know what Alexa just did. <laughs> <laughs> we have an Alexa and my husband just did that we're going to finish reading this in a second because it's another thing I have to do too besides listen to this song I'm going to go turn Alexa's volume down a little bit. Okay, I turned her down so she's not so loud. But this is something that I wanted to do. I was going to do it um, after. Hey, hey, Cassian, how's it going? Yes, you did. So I have a new thing that we're going to do. Every time we have um, a new subscriber, we're gonna pull a pin out of my pin collection and add it to the pin curtain. So this is for Kitty, who gave out a gift sub to Soda, as well as um, Moisty resubscribing with Prime. So we're gonna pull out a random pin. I have a huge collection. Okay, so for Kitty, this, we have Tower of Terror. Most of these are Disney pins, admittedly, but they're really old. I collected these from when I was in um, middle school through to my senior year of high school. So they're about, um, and because it was a little before middle school, maybe eight, nine years worth of pretty hardcore pin collection. So we've got a tower, tower of Terror one for Kitty. Let's see what we get from Moisty. Oh, so this is another Disney one. This one's really old. Do you guys remember when Hollywood Studios was called MGM Studios? We have an MGM Studios pin. Let me block my face so you can see it. Yeah. MGM Studios. Wow. Yes. Okay. Here we go. Let's add these to the pin curtain. Oh, hello. Fix the... What is happening? Camera. Hopefully it will fix when I sit back down in a second. Let's go pin these. Okay, so every time we have a new subscriber, we are going to add a pin to the pin curtain. And that counts for renewals, gifts, whatever, what have you. So there we go. We're going to start that little tradition here on Artistic License. Oh, Brie, we'll have fun with your movie. 
Okay, let's go back to the game. We're gonna finish reading Atris's writing. Okay, I was pleased to find that I could still recall most of the formula. With little experimentation, quickly succeeded in creating one of these devices myself. The procedure is actually quite simple. By altering key lines of the text, but slightly, a normal linking book's connection can be partially severed, thus such that anyone who attempts to use the book will be permanently trapped in the dark void of the link. That is, unless someone else then uses the book, at which point that person would become trapped and the first person displaced back into the world. The technique can be applied to books that have already been written, changes to the original text being so slight that anyone who's unfamiliar with the code would be unable to detect them. If indeed my father has not changed, what better bait could there be than a book that appears to be a link back here to Denis? It's where everybody wants to go. They want to get back to Denis. Trouble. My nightly analysis of the island's conditions have revealed the tremors have begun again. The pattern, however, is new. The disturbances are the result of the changes I have made. This did not at first concern me. However, tremors of this type were one of the possible side effects that I had anticipated during this initial phase of the island's readjustment. Still, in order to verify my assumptions, I decided to calculate again. Incorporating the new data, the results were not what I expected. The damage to the indestructible is more extensive than I... Oh, the understructure is more extensive than I had realized. I can no longer go to Riven as planned. Catherine, forgive me. Okay, so he's realizing he cannot go save Catherine himself. I must act while I still have the time. The signs are barely visible, but there's no question that the island's deterioration is accelerating. Total collapse is imminent, unless I can keep ahead, and that is becoming increasingly difficult to do. With every passing moment, I gain a clearer picture of the incredible chaos that my father's economy of words has yielded. But it is a dismaying process. The complexity of the problem is overwhelming. There is no end to this. The last few days have all but convinced me that the collapse of Riven is inevitable, and that at best I can only strive to delay it now, and hope that at some point the island will become stable enough to risk a rescue attempt. I think I've come up with a way to subdue the tremors. It, it will require my exclusive attention for at least a month or two, so it may be necessary to discontinue these journal entries for a while. Okay, you can see that he doesn't just a few days later, here's another one. Something truly miraculous has happened. Beyond all conceivable probability, someone has finally found my lost missed linking book and freed me from this prison. Hey, that was me. I did that last game. I immediately realized that this could be the solution to my dilemma, and I believe my mysterious benefactor is willing to assist me. I'm still not sure it can work. The logistics of such a scheme are formidable, but the mere fact that it may now be possible for me to continue my repairs to Riven and yet proceed with my original intent to find Catherine has given me renewed hope. The last few days have left me little time to work out the remaining problems with something, with sending someone else to Riven. It did occur to me, to, however, that if a way could be found to signal me once Gen had been captured, it would no longer be necessary to take a real linking book to Riven and risk the possibility of an inadvertently releasing Gen. The deteriorated state of the gateway image makes the use of the visual signal impossible, but the picture remains a reliable indicator of Riven's condition nonetheless. By measuring and interpreting variations in the noise pattern, I'm still able to observe basic changes that occur in the age, even though I cannot see them. The problem is that my instruments can only detect changes that occur on a fundamental level, and it seems unlikely that an individual can affect such an elementary change from within an age. The idea may seem foolish. Still, there is a known weakness that may be worth investigating, an anomaly that appears as a rift between two separate systems, the starfisher. But how, or even if, this fact could be exploited, I cannot say. Sending someone to Riven also means that once I received the signal that they were ready to return, I would have to leave my writing in order to take a real linking book there myself. However, provided my father was safely out of the way, this should take very little time. After that, assuming the island does not incur much damage in my absence, it should then be relatively simple matter to hold it together long enough for Catherine to return to Riven and evacuate the remaining islanders. Predetermining a signal without knowing the topography of the island may prove to be impossible, but I'm afraid that there can only be one answer to the question of whether or not I should send my friend to Riven with a way out. The potential for failure will be greatly diminished if the prison book is all that's taken there. I'm sure my father is expecting me to bring a linking book to Riven. He may not, may he not be disappointed. Okay, Alexa's still going for some reason. Let me turn it down more. Okay, I don't know why he's still playing music, but 
We played it through all of them, so there we go. All right, so a couple of things to note about this game. It is much, much harder <laughs> than Myst. So I have done a lot of practice. Um, you don't go to individual worlds and like solve chunks in the world like you do in Myst. In Riven, it's just one big gigantic puzzle. So it's much more difficult and you don't get small rewards in between, but it's much more satisfying that the end at the end. So um, you c the thing about Riven that's really cool is that you can believe the people who live in this world really designed all of this, this stuff that you're seeing. It's not just puzzles in a world the way Mist is. It's like, who would build that? Why? It makes no sense. Um, they're like, there is politics here. There's drama here. Um, so I did a lot of practicing to try to make sure that we don't fumble through things on stream. And I've got some notes here. Um, have to focus on work. Have, yeah, I'm happy I got to see you too, Cass. Um, want to check this game out, but I'm already a bit overwhelmed. <laughs> don't worry. I'm going to show you everything, but you focus on work. You can even watch, watch the VOD later. So there's this guy right here. We've got a button. We've got some of this. But we're not going to focus on that because we can't do anything with that quite yet. Thank you so much for the alert, Cass. I really appreciate it. So there was this mechanism that opened up the, uh, the little jail cell that we were in. And you can see there's this dagger jammed in it. We can't, we can't remove the dagger. We can't click it anymore. So we can't use that to lock anything back. There's our friend. There's our friend that uh, took our book from us. And I guess that other guy with the red strap pushed him over the edge. And we've got some stairs up here. You can, they never, they haven't remade this game in a fully 3D version yet for some reason. I don't really know why. Um, I guess because it wasn't very popular. I can tell you as a kid, I never beat it. I didn't beat it when it come at, came out. I couldn't. It was like way too hard. Um, you know, I didn't beat this game until I was an adult. So we've got some more stairs down there. You can go across there. But the first thing we actually need to do is go in here. So we've got this room with these beetles. And, um... <clears throat> So we can go inside here and we can take a look. So that's gated off. We've got all these beetles right here. So let's start with this one. Start with this one over to the right. What's this? Okay, so you can see somebody writing in one of these books and creating the world. What's coolest about this game is the lore and the world building. You guys are gonna see some really awesome world building in this game. Okay, so this is Gen. So if you can figure out from what we just read in Atrus's writing, this is Gen. He's coming to the world and he's talking to all of the inhabitants of this world and uh, presenting himself as a god. Okay, that was the one we just saw. This is beetle number three. And now you can see Gen has uh, done some banishing, lost the book, it's things going down the starfisher. He's not happy. And here, this is him kind of gaining control of this world. You can see this is a school he creates. We'll see that later. There's some war going on. You can see these daggers right here. Um, and uh, here's pages falling down to the people. So that's interesting. And here we go. You can see this is some kind of altar going on here with the book and Gen's hand and he's got some worshipers. Okay, so that's kind of this uh, a visual little story of what's been going on on this island. So we're gonna go back out here and we're gonna click this, click this button. Okay, you guys remember one of the rules of mist is if you see a button, you push the button. Okay, we push buttons, we pull levers, we do these things. So we're gonna push the button. Now these cutscenes, you can skip, you can press escape to skip them. So if you want to skip the cutscenes, you totally can. I'm not going to, because I don't believe in skipping cutscenes. Yes, you do all the things exactly, Koneko. 
Okay, and you can see there's this little peephole. So that's interesting. So that's still blocked off, but you can see that the room kind of rotated and the and these two door this door kind of like lines up across the room, all right? So, now what we're going to do. Now, how do you figure all this out? You just got to click around and experiment, okay? Riven does not signal things to you <laughs> very well. I just know this game, so I'm showing you how you do it. So we're going to come down here next. And the way that it signals kind of this next piece to you is a little bit clever. We've got another dagger here. Remember our guy, that friend that freed us, he stuck a dagger in that little lever mechanism. So you might think like, oh, let me click on this dagger. And oh, it takes me to a screen like this. You can go under. Oh, I went under. Okay. So we can come up here. We'll go across. Oh, you can see this right here. Through this little peephole, you can see that this goes off to another area. All right. So we need to figure out how many times to rotate the room so that we can do, we can get that to work. Okay. So I think, let's see. Let's try again to rotate you again. And you watch it rotate again. This is why it lets you skip it. The cutscenes can get a little repetitive and riven because this game is very hard. <laughs> so, so let's cut, look through the peephole again and see what we see. Okay, you can see now that it's, that this door is pointed to some other bridge over here. So that's interesting. So let's see if that was the right number of rotations to get something to happen down here. Oh, yeah, if you actually try to click on the door, you'll see that it's locked, you can't go in it. You gotta click under. Okay, so now we can get in. So if you rotate it twice, you can walk through. All right. So here we go. And this is back in the same beetle room. And if you look around the room, you can see that's back where we came. And then this is closed off. Okay, so we can't go that way. Let's go back over here. And let's see. Do I have to go back one more screen? Trying to remember exactly. Let me look at my um, notes just a little bit. Okay, this wasn't the right number of rotations because I should be able to, I want to be able to walk through here to get to a cave. Okay, so let's rotate another time. Boop. And this game is full of lore. Like, I think I told you guys this when we were playing Myst. Um, there is books on this as well. And you can kind of see, like, in this version of the game, like, how much world building there is. Okay, so that's, that's another, like, closed off area. Okay, what happens if we go now underneath our little door? Oh, don't click on the door, Karen. Click under the door. Thank you. Okay, so this has a little peephole. All right. And I don't... I know there should be another button and lever over here, so we haven't rotated enough times yet. Let's do it again. Go under... Now, one kind of cool thing about Riven is because it because it is still the point and click, you can kind of like click, 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 click really fast. So I'll show you guys when we get to another part of the game, potentially why a 3D version of Riven doesn't exist. There's certain areas of the game that are so long and large that if you actually had to like truly walk across it, um, you might it might like not really work out. <laughs> Like, it might literally take too long to walk across the bridge if they rendered it in, in like, really how it would be. Okay, here we go. So we're going across. You can see that opened up this cave. So we're going to come in here. And, oh, this looks really similar to that thingy that we saw at the very beginning. We need to get power to it. Okay, this actually gets power to that little thingy. Pushes the steam that way. Guess what? We still can't do anything with it. <laughs> so we did all that. 
little anticlimactic. Okay. <laughs> um, so then what we're going to do is press this button twice, I'm pretty sure, if my notes are correct. Now this is an audio only cutscene. You can't see anything happen, but you can hear that it's rotating. For whatever stupid reason, in the PC version, you cannot skip audio only cutscenes. They actually released this for iOS. You can get it on iPad and some other devices like that. And in that version, you can skip the audio only cutscenes if you want to. Um, don't know why you can't do that on the PC version. It's a little bit silly. Um, but you can't. <laughs> okay, so we're going to press the button twice. Um, and yes, okay. I think we have to flip this switch like that. Okay, and that raises that door across there. <clears throat> okay, so interesting. So we can get over here now. And now what we're going to do is flip the switch on this door that raised another one. I know you can't see it, but you're just going to have to trust me from the noise that it did it. And I think we pushed this button twice again. Yeah, so it's not doing that one, but it's doing another one. You're just going to have to trust me. We're going to watch two more audio-only cutscenes. Our goal is to get over to that gold dome that was in the distance. Did you just flip my switch? I never played Undertale, um, but I understand I ha I should, that I would really like it, but I'm scared because the bat aren't the battles like bullet hells? So yeah. Okay, so this takes me back to the beginning. You can see we're back at this little area like we were at before, but we can walk all the way through now. So that's pretty darn cool. <clears throat> um, Let's see. I think I need to press this button. No, I have to do it from this side. I have to do it from this side, that's right. So I have to press this button. I think two more times. Yeah, I'd have to put it on some kind of like super easy weenie mode or something because I can't do bullet hells. Okay, let's peep through the hole. Okay, gold dome's not open. What's up, Oreo? Oh, I'm blocking your food. There you go. There you go, baby. I've got, we've got cat food, like, right here, just off screen. Because this desk is way bigger and this room is, you know, actually just my office. I'm not sharing it. So I was able to put a way bigger desk in here. So he wants his cat food. And we put cat doors in all the doors so I don't have to get up constantly to let the animals in and out. Okay, perfect. This is what we wanted. Yes, it was two more times. Now, this is open. This was a gate before, but it's open because of all the switch flipping that we did. So we can walk across to this amazingly gigantic gold dome. What the hecking heck? Oh my god. So we come up here, and what's this? Oh, remember the other rule of mist? You write everything down. I'm going to draw this. I'm going to draw this. Um, we're going to see it again later. Spoilers. Okay, so we've got a 4x4. Four Okay, and then we've got this little L Tetris piece up here. We've got this little, this little Tetris piece. We've got a single down here. And this one is a three by three with two little guys off to the side. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Okay, so we've got these guys all on the paper. That would be a cute tattoo. There's a lot of missed things that would be cute tattoos, Kitty. I'm, I'm going to show you something. We're going to, I'll see if we get to it in this stream if it's next week. Um, we're going to get to a really fun thing, a really cool like lore thing. I can't wait to show you since you said that. Okay, now we're going to go on the catwalk. On the catwalk, we're going to do our little turn on the catwalk. You can see we're just going down there. Okay, we're going to come out here. Remember, we turned on that steam to power that one device that we saw at the beginning. And now we've got more steam. It was coming out the top. We're going to make it go out the side. 
All right, so let's turn around, show you guys. See, now it's going up here. So that's going to power some fun stuff. If we come down here, I'm going to go through this little cavey. We've got one more. We're going to make it go that way. If we look up, we can see there's more catwalks. Okay. Interesting. So all we're really doing right now is walking around the island, trying to get power to everything so that we can actually get to the other islands. Because if you remember from Atrus's writing, the ribbon is breaking up. Okay, it's having trouble. It's having like a lot of ridiculous seismic activity. It's breaking up. So we're trying to get power to various things so that we can get to other parts of Riven that we can't get to because the island is not whole anymore. Yes, exactly, Kitty. Okay. Now we're going to go back through the beetle room and we're going to go down this walkway this time. And we're going to go in this room right here. Ooh, what the heck in heck is this? Y'all hear that little musical, like, denotion right there? What the heck? What? Oh. What is that noise? What is that noise, you guys? Okay. What is this chair? Okay, so remember, Gen was a god to them. He would sit in this chair, and this is a microphone right here, and he would project out his image and messages to the people of Riven. So I wanted to show you guys that, but really the reason we're coming in here is because we need to open the door to this orange room. So we're going to do that. Okay. Now the orange room is open. There's also this blue room. This is very interesting. So he can project either into this blue room or he can project into this orange room. Okay, very interesting. Let's go back out. All right, we're gonna keep going down this passageway. There's another door. What's in here? secret entrance to the orange room. This room is a fascinating piece of world building. Okay, this cage here, this looks similar to that cage and chair we just saw when Gen would project himself out to speak to the uh, people of Riven, his image and voice would appear here. Okay, this is a temple. All right, you can come in here. There's a worship hall. These are large whale-like creatures. These guys right here. Remember those for later? You can see um, this fruit and, uh, and vegetables and stuff. Uh, these are offerings to these whale creatures who are revered and feared on Riven. The stained glass is a wayfinder, specifically Terra's wayfinder. Oh, I love the stained glass too. It's beautiful. This like sun thing. Yellow is a very like Gen color that he that he uses over and over um, to denote his his divinity. Okay, so now we're out of the temple, and this contraption is called the duo rail. Okay, because it's got two rails. It's not just a monorail. It's a duo rail, and we have this blue button. Remember, we must push button. So here we go. Oh, what is that in the distance? <gasps> Do you see it? Oh, it's going across. Okay. Come to me, duo rail. It does zip. It zips, it zips. Okay. Remember? When this game first came out, it was on CD-ROM, 
And back in the day, you would have games that were multiple discs. Now, I know this game doesn't visually look too impressive in 2022, but I swear to God, in the 90s, this, was, this looked like gorgeous. This was like gorgeous, beautiful, oh my God, mind-blowing, really amazing. So it came on multiple discs to fit all of its beautiful graphics, okay? When you climb in the duo rail, this is when you switch discs, but you get rewarded, okay? You get rewarded with a fun roller coaster ride when it's time to switch discs. So here we go, you guys. We're gonna put in um, disc two. This is the Jungle Island disc. Are you ready? We're gonna we're gonna ride the roller coaster. We have to ride it like this, okay? Wee! So get your hands up. I want to see like waving emojis, like these guys here. I put them in the chat. Um, where's my emojis? There they are. I want to see waving emojis, like we're we're riding down Splash Mountain. Okay, one, two, three. Here we go. Whoosh. Yes, Koneko, you got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whee! Ah! Get some air. Whoosh. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Ride over. Uh, Mr. Kitty is correct. Mr. Kitty is correct. This was one of the people were like so hyped for this game and then it was too hard for like everybody, but it made you make sure you had a CD-ROM on your computer because Mist was the shit. Um, so you had to get Riven. Okay. We're on a new island now. Um, this one is called Jungle Island. I don't know if that's the official name or if that's just what I call it. So don't ask. I don't know. But here's something interesting on this island. Oh, what is this? Eyeball. Okay, let's get another page of our notebook. Let's get another page of our notebook. And we've got, yes, we have an orb to ponder. Okay, so we've got this, this eyeball. It's kind of like, like a little bit open. Okay. We got eyeball. We have this number, this one, two, three, what was it? One more time. Yes. Okay. I drew it wrong. I have to draw the symbol. Okay. We got kind of a chirp sound. Okay. So we're writing all that down. Okay. So we've got on this eyeball here on Jungle Island, we have got this symbol. We've got kind of like a chirp sound. I think that's backwards for you guys, actually, because I flipped my camera, but I wrote chirp. <laughs> Yeah, it's a box with a little carrot inside. Yeah. Okay. So very interesting. Very interesting. What is all that about? We don't know. We don't know. Okay. We're going to go down this path. What is this? Wow. Look at these beautiful stairs and they're all lit up. Somebody took a lot of time to build this. Okay. We've got some more sounds. Go back a little bit. Something that you'll notice, if you turn around at the stairs, what does that shape kind of look like? Maybe that's its head right here. Maybe the eyeball rotating thing is an eye. Maybe that's a little foot. Kind of looks a little bit like a froggy, doesn't it? That looks a little bit like a frog. I'm gonna put frog on our notes as well. Goose? Frog, that's right, Koneko. I guess it could look like a goose with a squat neck. But it's a frog. It looks like a frog. It does kind of look like a goose. Riven is very vague. Remember, the whole point of Riven is they're trying to build a world. They're trying to tell a story. They're trying to make it look like real people did this and real people created these puzzles for a real purpose. Okay? So everything's not as, like, exact and clear as it was in Mist. Okay. So we're going to proceed down this path. Um, we're going to go, I wrote down which forks I'm supposed to take in which order. We're going to turn, we're going to go right. We're going to go up. There we go. We're going to go up at this fork 
go across this little bridgey here. Um, at this fork, we're going to go left. So we're going to go this way. We're going to go through here. Oh, another cutscene. <gasps> There's somebody in the tower. Oh, they're sounding the alarm. They're telling the other residents that I am here and I might be dangerous. I'm a stranger, they don't know me. Okay. All right. Whew. Let's see. There's a door there that's closed. Um, which way am I supposed to go? Yeah. I'm gonna go. It's beautiful, isn't it, Koneko? Like, this aesthetic is just gorgeous. It's, like, kind of nature-y, but kind of steampunk. But, like, I don't know. It's just, I find it very inspiring. Oh, there's more people. You can see them up on the bridge. Oh, and there's a kid playing down at the bottom. Uh-oh. They come in to collect their child. Say, it is dangerous out here. They're strangers. Go back inside. <laughs> okay. So here is a little um, Riven village. Houses right here. So wow, what's this? So this is just kind of a hole in the water. You can see that that it's like, it's literally a hole in the water, but there's nothing making the hole. It's kind of just somehow the water's being repelled. So that's very interesting. Okay, let's go up this ladder. So there's a actual one of the houses here we can actually get to. Most of these you can't actually click to get to, but this one you can. And something fun happens if you knock five times. Oh, hello. Oh, she said, fuck you. Don't bother me. <laughs> so that's what happens if you knock five times. <laughs> We're going to keep going down here. We're going to go past all of this. Okay. And we've got another fun little area right here. So here's another like kind of, um, it looks like the whale thing. And you can put offerings here. You've got some little like, drum maybe brazier looking things it's a little unclear but there's definitely like some kind of stuff going on here here's an oven um so something something happens here and then we've got this guy so this is interesting let's see we can open the top wow okay and we can go inside but we're kind of just up in the air right now we're kind of just up in the air right now so let's see what else we can do with this guy. We have a lever right here. We, we pull all levers, so. Goodbye, submarine. It go down. Okay. So, submarine go down to hole. Now it's down there. This isn't another, like, water, but it's like the water is being repelled by something. So that's cool. All right, now we're going to go back the way we came. How far back do I go? Um, okay. I know where we gotta go now. Go down. There we go. Down that ladder. Thank you. Okay. We're gonna go back, back, back. Go back very far, past this blue stuff, back here, and now we're going to turn and go through this door right here. Have you ever played Bioshock? I have watched people play Bioshock. I've never played it myself, um, but I do love the aesthetic of Bio Bioshock. This is very Wizard, Wizard of Oz doorman. True, Gen is very Wizard of Oz um, kind of vibe, so there's a lot of like Wizard of Oz doorman kind of thing going on here. Um, but I like the move mechanics. I prefer it to waiting for a character to walk the speed of a snail. True, Kitty. Point and click um, is is a, a dead genre, but it shouldn't be. 
At the point where you stopped to check where you were going, it looked like there was a tall rock structure with an angel. Good eye, Koneko. Good eye. We're going to go back to that later. Okay, we're going to go down here. And I think, which way do I turn at this fork? Yes, left at the fork. Okay. We're trying to get to the big fish. Yes, okay. Big fish. So I think the way that you're supposed to play this game and explore is you actually get up there and like climb down first because if you climb down first then you see that there's this little guy here that you can click and open up the mouth i don't know how you could figure that out from coming this direction so i don't think that's what you're supposed to do but that's what i'm gonna do <laughs> i'm neurodivergent and artist noticing shapes is kind of my thing yes 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 i love that okay so we go in the fishy we go in the fishy and then what we're gonna do is um turn this crank and this is like little details in this game that are so beautiful. You can see how like the wood is worn because it's like wood against wood on that crank. Um, so that's like really freaking cool. Like this game is so detailed. They really thought about how different things operate within the world, what makes sense, um, what would be actually happening. Okay, so now we're at the upper level of the canopy. So we're gonna go through here. We see this rotating, spinning dome. So that's really interesting. Hmm. Okay. And we can go look at it. It is just spinning. And it's got... These kind of look like the eyeballs a little bit. Only it's opening and closing. So the eyeball we saw on that little round thing was in a particular position. But these are kind of like... You know, doing this. Like blinking at you. Okay, so we're going to come back around. We're going to turn down this way. Where is it at? A little farther? Yeah, here it is. Okay. Now, watch. This is the same thing. It's opening and closing, and it's like doing it... Oh, and one of them's gold. Okay. So I'm pretty bad at the timing for this, but I think I'm a, I just got it. Thank God. Sometimes I have to click it over and over to get the timing right. You click it when it's on the gold, and then... Oh... Oh, little gold dome. We saw big gold dome before. We have little gold dome. Okay. Wow. So then let's go take a look at what we just opened. Oh, another benefit of point and click, kick, Kitty, is it, I can do first person and it doesn't trigger my simulation sickness if it's point and click, if I'm not actually walking. Okay, so in here, that looks like a book beneath that glass. And then there's kind of these like sliders that you can mess with. We can't get them past each other. Like they stop. Oh, wrong combo. So we're going to have to figure that out later. But we got the dome open. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we can't solve that now. Let's keep going. So there's this up here. Huh, what is this? Let's go inside. There's another crazy chair looking thing, but this looks like the skull of a big animal and it's got the tusks, just like those whale things. So it's like a skull of that big whale animal. That's crazy. Okay, we're gonna pull the left lever. And we're gonna rise up, rise up. Oh, we can survey everything from up here. Wow. Okay. We can look down. And oh, what's this? This is very interesting. So you can see there's more of these holes all over the place in the water. And then there's this thing right here that's like this contraption. Um, you can see that there's kind of this broken catwalk, so you can't really get out on it from that direction. But let's do this. And now the bottom is closed. Okay, so we've closed the bottom on this contraption. Okay, now let's go back down. Yes, we got to experience what it was like to be very tall for a moment. 
Kitty, it absolutely would be pixelated on a big screen TV. It looks pixelated to me. It's just that I've got things kind of tweaked in Twitch so it doesn't look super pixelated to you guys. But like on my screen right now, it looks fairly pixelated. Um, it definitely, you can tell it's something that used to be gorgeous and is no longer gorgeous. <laughs> um, but it's on Steam and it's very cheap if you want to get it for yourself. Um, okay, so we did that. We were at the top of the Angel Koneko. Yes, we totally were. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, we're going to go back down. Let's go back out the fish mouth. Yeah, because it's point and click and you're not walking around, it can be kind of difficult to place exactly where things are. That is a tr that is true in regards to like what can make this genre challenging. You have to really, really think about the space that you're in um, in a way that you wouldn't have to think about it otherwise. Okay, fishy, open your mouth again. Okay, now... Oh, nope, we're going down. Okay, now let's go back. Oh! That child got very close to me. Curious child. Oh, a beetle. Okay. Yeah, that cutscene is really freaks me out every time. <laughs> Even though I kind of like knew it was coming, I half forgot. And I was like, oh, it's the child. <laughs> Okay, let's go. Now we're gonna go, let's see. We're gonna go left at the fork so we can go the other direction. I used to have trouble with 3D environments in general. I don't really get used to navigating 3D environments in games, so I played Legends Arceus and um, The World Ends With You. I know what you mean, Koneko. I guess I kind of grew up on it. So remember those the daggers we've seen? We've seen two daggers. Here's a big one. So remember, daggers are of interest. So we're gonna go and investigate this dagger. And oh, look. Another ball. Okay, another little eyeball. What was that? Okay, so we've got a different symbol. Let me just do it one more time. Okay. So that's kind of like a some kind of wail or bark type of sound. Some kind of like Ugh. Okay. Let's go back. <clears throat> so that's a second little ball. It sounds like it's saying, hey, yeah, a little bit. Okay, so we've got this this symbol going with a frog, and then we've got this symbol with some kind of like barking, wailing, neigh type of sound. Okay, we're gonna keep going this way. And which way am I supposed to go next? Um. Okay, we're gonna go through the this door right here. Okay, we're gonna go back through the wooden slot door. Do the little wall symbols beside it matter? Um, no, not really. These are what matters. These are what matters. Okay. And we're gonna go right at the fork. And we're gonna go back across this hanging bridge. And now, We've got something fun. We're gonna go back, we're gonna go down here. We haven't gone down this way yet. Look at those guys. Oh, what are those? They are called Sunners. That is the official name. I do know their official name. Now you must approach the Sunners slowly. So you have to, you can see my hand is there. I can click if I want to, it's not a cutscene. We're gonna wait for their animation to finish. Okay, let's go forward more. Oh, I think I went, I went the wrong direction. They ran away and we didn't even get to see them running away. Yeah, they ran away. Okay, we're going to go back. Okay, let's try that again. I didn't click the right direction. Can't remember how far back I'm supposed to go. 
Maybe it's to here. We go down to here. I don't think I have to ride the roller coaster again. There, they're back. Okay. Let's try that again. Yeah, they're like little plesiosaurs. It's like the magical Leopleurodon. Charlie! Let's go to the magical Leopleurodon, Charlie. Damn it, I did it too fast. Well, actually, we get to see the movie of them running away now. Bye, Sunners. Magical Leo Plerodon. Okay. I gotta get close enough for them to do the thing. So you guys can see it. Okay, let's try one more time. I think I can do this. I'm gonna go back to here. Then go back. There they are again. And wait for his animation to finish. Oh, they sun in so good. That looks fun. I'm going to name one of them Nessie. The other one can be Charlie. Oh, I love that. Charlie. The magical Leo Plurodon. Yeah, Nessie and Charlie. The sound we just heard. There it is. It is the sound. Okay. Wow. So let's go around this beach. We don't need them anymore. I just needed them to make that sound. They can run away now. So now this rock right here, this is kind of shaped a little bit like that whale creature that we keep seeing everywhere. There's one other thing in here. Where is it? I'm trying to see. Yeah, haha. -ha. Okay, so on the whale rock, we have another eyeball. Okay, so this one is like that. Just look one more time, make sure I wrote that down right. It does look a little bit like a turtle, but it's not. It's supposed to look like one of the whale creatures. Okay, and this does kind of sound like a whale call. That noise it just made. Okay, so we've got chirp frogs. We've got the barking sunner sound, and we've got this whale call that all match with these symbols. All right. <clears throat> Now let's go back. Oh, that's not the right way. We're going the other way. Okay, we're gonna go down this path. We haven't gone down this path yet. So let's see what's down here. There's the other side of that lookout tower that we saw before. And here is an interesting thing. And oh, look, another ball. Let's see what's on this one. That's a buzzing sound. That is a buzzing sound. Okay, that's this one. All right, so we got the buzzing sound. And then this looks kind of like a little cistern. So let's turn the crank and we get another clue. It's gonna fill up with some water. And that's kind of the shape of those beetles that we saw flying around. Yeah, so they were like little flying beetle bee things, exactly, Koneko, that we saw flying around. 
right? This game is old and it's still like really impressive. Like what they did at the time is amazing. Okay. So that's that little cistern. Now what we're going to do is come back up here. Right? <laughs> yes, but um <laughs> Okay. Um Maybe it was down here. Next thing I have to do is get into the submarine, but Oh yeah, no, it's down here. This is the ladder. Okay, so remember we dropped the submarine from up here. You can kind of see the little whale statue thingies up here. So we're going to go down. And forward. And here we go. There's our submarine. <clears throat> okay, so this is the second ride of this game. So we did a roller coaster, duo rail. This is now our submarine ride. So the way these controls work are a little bit confusing because it's like steampunkish and you can't just make anything simple. <laughs> um, so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to just make it go forward with this right lever here. So we're going to go forward twice. No, we're going to go forward three times. Yep. Yep. And we're going to watch a little movie. Okay, so we went forward once already. We all live in a yellow submarine, a yellow submarine, a yellow submarine. We all live in a yellow submarine. Okay, so this is taking us around to all of those various holes in the water that you can get out of without getting wet. Okay, just forward twice, just making sure that I count. And after this, we're gonna go forward one more time. So this is a slow ride. Right, this is for the kiddos, this is family friendly. Um, not like the roller coaster, which is a little bit more thrilling. This is this is low thrill, low thrill amusement park ride. Forward three times. We're trying to get to the schoolhouse. That's what I want to show you guys next here. Yeah, this is the twenty thousand leagues under the sea ride, exactly. Okay, now we need to turn. So to turn, you do the center dome right here. And then we're gonna go forward one more time. And you can skip all of these ones because they're not audio only. They do have animations. So you can skip all of these with escape if you are like that and like to skip cutscenes. But I just think they're really beautiful. Okay, so now we're gonna get out of the submarine. I keep wanting to call it 20,000 miles under the sea because in Dutch it uses the word Mijalin. That means miles, Mijalin means miles. Am I even saying that right? Mijalin, Mijalin? I don't know how to do Dutch, I'm sorry. Yes, the animations are absolutely gorgeous. Okay, so here we're in another part. You get another angle of the village over here. I love the riven houses, these little like beehive looking things. I think they're amazing. Here is that contraption that we saw a little bit ago that we closed the bottom of. Okay, we're going to go up here. And we've got these levers. We're going to flip them all to up. We want them all on. Okay. And now you can see that a lot of these catwalks are more complete. Like this is actually sticking out over it here. There was a catwalk over here that was incomplete. Um, if you look out here, basically you'll see a bunch of catwalks that are not stuck out yet. They like cut off. So we did that. Now when we navigate through the submarine, we can actually get everywhere. So now if we try to go to the schoolhouse, we can actually get there. If we tried to go beforehand, um, you would see that the catwalk wasn't fully extended and so it wouldn't work. Okay. So we flipped all the switches on and we need to use the dome to turn around. And then we're gonna do, um, we're gonna make it go left instead of right for this little lever. Okay, so we're turned around, we need it to go left. And then we're gonna go forward. We're gonna go forward twice this time. Malin, as in May, but with the E sound. Oh, Malin. Malin? Mylin? 
Malin? I don't think I'm doing it right. Am I close in any of those? Malin? Instead of... It's hard in English because there's a lot of different ways to say an E sound in English. So maybe it's one of those sounds that's like hard to explain with like more English phonetics. <clears throat> Okay, so now we are at a new destination. If I did that right, we're at the schoolhouse. Do the sound you need doesn't exist in English. Why? Mylin? Oh, Mylin. Am I doing it right now? Okay, so this is another building. So if you remember from the pictures we looked at with Gen, he created a school and he was teaching a lot of the Riven um, people. So this is very interesting. If you look around, there's like an alphabet on the wall. Um, this is These are the Dene letters. He was teaching them how to write using Dene language, which is the language that she used to create the different realm books. Here's another imager, a mini one. Here's Gen himself. Terekoi Dan. He's teaching them all about the Dani. Okay. You can see more motif of the whale creature on these lamps. Um, here's a chalkboard. Here's another chalkboard with some Denny writing on it. You can see these kind of like pew bench desk things. The Dutch yeah sound or a sound is very odd. I'm surprised you can't get it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I probably have would have to like listen to someone say it like you know those youtube videos that are like how to pronounce such and such and i probably have to listen to one of those a few times to get it so here we've got some snacks um and we've got some like little writing homework or a test or something you can see it's got red marks on it as if it got graded and here is what you need in this room this is a counting game okay you can see here the symbol at the bottom very similar to the symbol that we had for the buzzing beetle. And then you can pull this. One, two, three, four, four. Okay, so he fell four times. And we have this interesting symbol here at the bottom. Let's do it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. And we've got this interesting symbol down at the bottom. Oh, okay. It looks like one of the ones behind the eye. They do kind of look like those symbols, don't they, kitty? Let's do another one. 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 Mm-hmm. One again. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight. One, two, three, three. One, two, three. Oh, we already know this one's two. We, I think we had gotten that one before. We're gonna keep going until one side wins. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That one's seven. 
Here's one again. One. This guy's about to lose. One. Ah, and then the whale eats him. So he drops and then the whale eats him. Okay, and then the game resets. Now, obviously, this is a number, all right? And you can play this game to figure out how to count in Denis. Not only does this teach you the numbers that look like those symbols on the back of the eyeballs, don't they? They all look pretty much like that. You can figure out the Denis numbering system if you play enough. Now, we're not gonna do that. I already know how to count in Denis, and I wrote it all down. Here we go. Now, the way that this works is base five. Denis uses a base five numbering system. So actually, let me switch back to webcam only so that you guys can see this nice and big. So I can explain it. Okay, white balance, go. Okay, so you can see one um, is a straight line down. So all of these one through five are unique, but then it starts repeating. So you've got six right here, which is one line across and then one line down, right? So all of these six through, um, this would be 10. Yeah, six, well, six through nine have the line across plus one, two, three, four, and then a unique one for 10. And it goes all the way up to 25. There's a fancy symbol for 25, which is an X, or you can write it with um, zero, with a one in front of a zero, okay? This is how you count in Denis. This will be important. So we know now from that, that our chirpy frog sound is a three. We know that our barking sunner sound is a four. We know that our bellowing whale sound is, let's see, I think I wrote down, no, it's a five, it's a five. And then our buzzing sound, our buzzing B sound is a two. Huh, very cool. And this game could exist in the world. Like that's what's so cool about this, about Riven, is that this game could really be something that the kids play, where they try to bet like what numbers they're gonna roll and who's gonna get eaten by the whale first. And it's just amazing, okay? Excellent, beautiful, intricate piece of world building in this game. We are at eight o'clock and we have not actually gotten much reward for solving these puzzles. So I just wanna reiterate, Riven absolutely loves to show you a world and let you solve things and reward you with absolutely nothing. Because <laughs> if you don't already know this stuff, then you can't know all these things that I'm explaining to you, right? So that is the schoolhouse. It's like hungry, hungry hippies, except you roll the number of balls you, you, of balls you can eat, yes. And then the whale eats at the end. <laughs> okay, so we go back in the submarine. We're gonna turn the knob around and we're gonna go forward twice. All right, so we're gonna go forward once and then again. Into the water. Okay, we're gonna go forward one more time. Let's go up. <clears throat> All right, so because we closed the platform before we can walk out on this, if you come here too early, you can't walk out on this platform. Now there's this interesting thing right here that we can pull. Now remember, Gen was ruling these people with an iron fist and he was ruling them through fear. And remember what they're scared of is those big whale creatures, right? So that game we just played where you drop down and get eaten by the whale, well, this drops down into the water now, doesn't it? And this is a device you can fasten a person to. We're gonna ride it up. But imagine if we ride it up and then 
that bottom is opened from Gen's high seated position in that tower. And then we're dropped down. Okay, imagine that. So if someone was in trouble, maybe they were put as a prisoner in this cell, like this young man. He looks a little sad, doesn't he? Probably because he is a prisoner who is about to be sacrificed to the whale via that gallows machine. Okay, why don't we help him out? Let's do that. Don't worry, sir. I'm here for you. You can escape. Oh, he is already gone. Where did he go? Let's find out. Okay. What's in this grate? There's a little, little dealy thingy in this grate. Oh, this man did not need us to save him. He was okay without us. We thought we were doing a nice thing. Um, we were kind of just getting in his way. <laughs> uh, okay. So, secret passage. Wonderful. Um, we're going to walk down the end of this very, very dark tunnel. I'm clicking a bunch of times. I clicked like five or six times before I finally see light again. And oh, here's water. Okay, what is this? Light. Oh, light. Light. No, nope. turn on the light. There we go. Oh, go back. Okay, now we can see, oh my god, that this is kind of like this weird door thing. I think, oh, we have to go one more screen. That's why it wasn't working. I, I struggle with clicking this little area. It's kind of difficult. I think there's more lights and I just didn't do them right. Okay, anyway. Turn around. Yeah, that's another light. Yeah, I can't seem to click it. Whatever. Do I have to do the light? Hmm. Let me fumble around with something that isn't even a puzzle. There we go. I just wasn't clicking on the bulb. Okay, now we've got all the lights on. Fill me with power of darkness, squeaky cast light. Okay, so now you can see this is a little door. So I can flip this door and... Oh! Another secret passage! This one's already lit up, so obviously the man came this way. And what is this? Oh, animal symbols. All kinds of animal symbols. Now, just like lots of other puzzles in this game, we cannot solve this yet. We do not have everything. We do know some animal things. Okay, we know some animal things, but the Denis are obsessed. Okay, um, give me one second, guys. I will be right back. Let me switch to a, well, y'all can listen to this music for a second. Okay, Ree's having a really tough time, you guys. I mean, y'all remember. Last time I was streaming, I had to run out because she was having some bathroom issues. Um, her her mind's kind of going, and she's still in a lot of pain with the uh, with her hip dysplasia and stuff. She's got an appointment next Friday. 
um, but she's having a lot of trouble. Oh, I see you guys amusing yourself with the gifts. I'm so glad. Okay, where were we at? Yeah, it is poor baby. I don't know what we're gonna do. I mean, she's like somewhere between 15 and 18 years old at this point, so she's really old. Um, so yeah, it's it's tough. It's tough. We're not sure there's much else we can do, but I'll let you guys know what kind of ends up happening with that. Fri not tomorrow, but the next Friday. Okay, so we can't solve this puzzle right now. But look, there's the dagger that we saw from some of our other friends. Okay, so we're going to backtrack. Go back to the prisoner's cell. And we pull this pin so we can get back through it. This is another one of the audio only cutscenes. Oh wait, it doesn't, it's not a cutscene. I thought it was for a second. I was about to say this is one you can't skip either. So we're gonna go this way. I don't know if y'all can hear it, but she's doing the wailing, crying thing Rhi is. That's what was, Levi was like, maybe she wants in here. Rhi, it's okay. So if y'all can hear a lot of that, I'm sorry. Okay, so we're gonna drop this ladder down. And that's all we're gonna do. You can't hear her, okay. Good, because it's a little distressing of a sound. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go down the ladder. I'm just looking if I'm just supposed to... Yeah, yeah, okay, I am supposed to go down. So we're going to go down the ladder, and then we're going to go back around here, and oh, we're back to where we kind of uh, started with this section. Huh, very cool. All right. I think we're supposed to go this way. Right? Is it this way? No, I don't think so, actually. So we're trying to get back to the tree area. I don't remember how to get back there. It's this way. It's the other direction down the ladder. Oh, yeah, because you go through the blue area. Okay, so we're back at the tree area. Remember, this is the way to the fish. We're going to come through here. And we've got all the cut down trees. All right, so th those are the things we need to do on Jungle Island. So we're going to go around over here. We're trying, I'm trying to get to that axe. There we go. So you get to the axe, and then you go down. And I love the little blue area, too. It's really beautiful. And we're going to get in this cart. OK. Amusement park ride number three, you guys. And remember, this would be a disc swap when in the original version, because <laughs> we're going to a new island. And yes, this one goes fast, so it's definitely like Thunder Mountain. And we go through the caves. Thunder Mountain doesn't have an underwater section, though, which is a shame. Okay, this is Crater Island. Um, so I think let's go ahead and actually stop and save here because you guys, Riri needs me. So we're going to save. I'm sure y'all can hear her now. So we're going to do number two. This is our stream save. Okay, let's go back to webcam only. All right, you guys. So that is part one of Riven. We're going to try to finish it 
um, next time. Because actually, once you start discovering these things, um, it becomes kind of uh, eventually like when you get to the end, it's like this cascading series of rewards. Like if the game finally rewards you after all this time. <laughs> so really all we've done so far is kind of like explore the world a little bit, navigate around, kind of see what's going on. You can tell there's sort of these two factions of the people that are scared of Gen and tortured by him. And then there's this other faction of rebels um, that are leaving these daggers everywhere. So that's kind of what's going on. And we're going to find out more next week. But before then, let's find someone to raid. Let's see, let's see. So my friend to clarify that we've raided a couple of times had a um, rebrand that he did recently. Shinov, he actually moved too, and now he's called Shinov. Um, yeah, this game is super cool, Kitty. I cannot wait to show you guys next week. Next week, I'm hoping we'll finish it because we've already done the navigating around Jungle Island and the Temple Island. Those two first ones is the longest part. So now we're going to have a lot easier time. Mr. Kitty was enjoying peeking over. I always love having Mr. Kitty um, in there because I know he's a he's a gamer, too. Kitty, you need to tell him to make his own Twitch account so he can follow me. We're going to raid to clarify. We're going to raid, but it's he's Shinov now. Shinov. Okay, there we go. All right, you guys. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I absolutely loved seeing you all again. It was great to stream again. Oh, look, Oreo says hi. Queen's back there, too. You can see her little, her little ears poking up behind Oreo. <laughs> Riri is back there as well behind the microphone. Um, so yeah, if you would like to, uh, see more of my streams, please follow me here on Twitch. My VODs are on YouTube, so please feel free to go subscribe to the YouTube to watch any of those. My main social media is Twitter, so you can find me there. Um, and we are called The Theater here, and, um, we have Artistic License on Thursdays and Interstage Window on Saturdays. And on Saturday, we are going to be talking about season one of Sailor Moon Crystal, so I hope to see you all there on Saturday, noon on Saturday. Season one, Sailor Moon Crystal, Interstage Window. It's going to be a fantastic time. All right, here we go. Let's raid into Shinov. All right, bye guys. See you later.